With Americans driving their cars longer than ever, many people will eventually have to decide to either repair or replace the old clunker. Mm, old That's clunker. your old, yeah. It's not just mean husband, does it? It means car. <laughs> Our financial <laughs> contributor, Ray Martin, is here with some surprising Ouch. new advice. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, a man. <laughs> clunker, clunker. Oh, well, I'm like, holy cow, it's a whole new perspective. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so this question really comes up now because there's yeah. so many things going on with a clunker bill yeah. being passed by Congress. Yeah. Is there a rule of thumb to follow? Actually, you know, the president signed it yesterday. The car allowance rebate system is now law and will go into full effect Man. in 30 days. You know, but Americans are driving their cars longer. The, average, the median age of vehicles on the road today is 9.4 years. And when you own an older car, you're eventually going to face those words, auto repairs, and have to make a decision. Right. All right. So you have a checklist yep. to help us decide if it's worthwhile to fix the car. Let's take a look. Okay. But well, you, you got to look at safety, reliability, rec repair costs. You know, if you're going to hand down the car to your teen driver, you want to make sure it has all the safety features on it. They're more prone to accidents. Because the big mistake people think, I'm going to give the kid the clunker, but it's not as safe. It's not car. as safe. And you, you got and safety is priceless, right? You, reliability, getting back and forth to work. You need to, you know, if you're going to have a big repair bill, get at least two auto mechanics to estimate that bill before you decide to fork over the money. But the big one also is value and useful life. If the cost of the repairs are more than the value of the vehicle, yes. you want to rethink that. But also useful life. Does it extend the useful life of the vehicle? See, okay. that's the thing about husbands. Yeah. If we have a useful life, <laughs> yeah. you should yeah. let us hang around. No, yeah. no matter how many the uh, mileage on no, the No, the mileage is irrelevant. The as mileage long as on you the can, you can turn that Irrelevant. Back. And right. I got a formula exactly. for useful life here for you, too. Oh, okay. here. You want to think about this. <laughs> I say for every thousand dollars of repair cost, you should get at least a year or more of useful life on your vehicle. Oh. Why do I come up with that? Right. If it's a thousand dollars or less divided by 12, that's $83 a month. If you can drive a car for a year for $83 a month or more, a year or more, that's low cost repair free right. driving. That's cheap driving. Do it. I'm not sure this this goes on. The, the husband car metaphor <laughs> no. continues or not. But I just want to ask this right. because you always used to say, you know, if you're yeah. going to get a new vehicle, yeah. really shop for a used or one that's been leased for a couple of years because they they that really would fit with a husband. Yeah. Get one with no baggage. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> Go ahead, Ray. Used here, broken in. I, I don't know where we're going to go with this one, but uh, I'll try to bring it back to the car side. I, I am a newer used car guy. I like right. to buy a year or two because... Because all the depreciation... I, I, the, that's right. I don't want to pay for the first year depreciation, mm. which can be 15 to 20%. Let's talk about this cash for clunkers then. Yeah. How does it work? How, how can you best exploit it? Okay, well, the way this bill is, is uh, the car uh, allowance rebate system says if you take your old car and trade it in, you can get up to $4,500 for it, even if it's only worth $100. That's even if it's worth nothing. That's but a lot of money. As long, you know, yeah. a, 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 as long as you buy a new, more fuel efficient vehicle. Right. That's okay. a game changer now, and people are going to have to start thinking about do they buy a new car I think under this we're cash for clunkers? we're something like this into Britain at the moment. I think Gordon Brown's talking about. And something, Germany something did like it, this. and it was quite yeah. successful there. Right, and so it's a great, it's great yep. for the auto industry, and it gets good incentives. And part of the really, really smart part of this, yep. the green part of this, yep. is to get the gas guzzlers off the road off the and road. replace them with more fuel yeah. efficient. Yeah. And that's really the only other part of the equation is you have to buy something that's more, more fuel efficient, fuel than efficient the old and one. brand new, brand spanking new, right. not just new to you. So if if you were in the position to um, get do this, would you do it? Well, here's the checklist you got to go through. First of all, does your old car qualify for this cash for clunker? So is, is it 25 years old uh, or, or more or, or less rather? Is it 18 miles per gallon? Uh, have you owned it for more than a year? Uh, you know that that you have to go through that. If you right. can sell it on a private sale for more than $4,500, you want to do that. Mm -hmm. The last thing is, can you really afford a new car loan? You don't want to spend all your emergency fund and get into payments that you can't afford because right. the new car you buy, even with cash for clunkers right. rebate is going to become an old car with okay. payments. Got okay. it. Ray Martin, as right. always, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, you Ray ready, Martin. Ready to go.